All right, challengers, welcome to day eight. Uh, something we're going to focus on today, uh, start off talking very briefly about this idea and then move on to one more and then get out of here. Let me see. Uh, get comfortable being uncomfortable. I mean, literally, you're going to hear that often. You're going to see that on t-shirts nowadays. I mean, it's one that's likely to circulate the internet quite often. But, um, but if you look past what a cliche that things become and you get to the core of the quote, you know, it's absolutely beautiful in its simplicity. And it's, and it's so relevant, not just with CrossFit, but I think with improving habits of, of, of eating, uh, you know, outside of the box, obviously. And your body as it is, is going to change in relation to stimulus and more so in relationship to, uh, to, to popular unfamiliar stimulus, right? So, so get comfortable being uncomfortable. Now we're going to talk about uh, a word called courage. Um, you might define courage as, as doing the right thing in the face of adversity. You know, willingly putting yourself out there, even though your viewpoint could be vastly different from the majority. Uh, there are some people who thrive under those conditions, and, and, and some, you know, they willingly subject themselves to criticism from the masses. Uh, there's a quote by Mark Twain that says, whenever you find yourself on the side of majority, it's time to uh, reform, or, you know, or, or to pause and reflect. Now, I like to think that, that that I tend to usually be on the less occupied side of the fence more often than not, but I know there's a lot of people who are not. I know that some, you know, are, are quite content to be quiet facing the crowd, to move about completely unheard, completely safe and completely comfortable. Most people like the anonymity. anonymity. I like it, but I think perhaps just maybe somewhere hidden deep down inside, past the memories of getting stuff in a locker in fourth grade, you know, way down inside. I, c I believe that the vast majority of us somehow want to be in the spotlight. I think somewhere inside of all of us, we wish we could shout out the way we feel, the way we think, the truth that our heart screams at us, yet somehow we don't. We continue on living how we are supposed to or how fear allows us to. And I could be wrong, but, but maybe everyone lives a little bit each day, uh, you know, very few people, I would say, live at the top of their game. You know, very few people roll through their lives like an unstoppable force, chowing down on Big Macs and six packs and just loving their life, right? <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, I think society as a whole could be content to eat what they want to and live on manufactured food and drugs and die at the age of 76. You know, happy simply to have existed for that long. But, you know, if, if that is you, you might, you might want to stop listening. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to, for the, uh, for the sake of the people that I intend to hear this, lean to the side of hoping that most of you are wanting something better, looking for it, wondering why you haven't found it inside uh, some random global gym before you used to come here, uh, or your Weight Watchers, or Jenny Craig, wondering why Sean T can't give it to you, um, or why your experience at P90X was more like P90 fail. This post is for you guys. I'm going to let you in on a secret, a fitness secret that Jillian Michaels doesn't want you to know, a nutrition secret that Subway hopes you never find out. Uh, in truth, you know, really, the only gym equipment you could ever use or ever really need, you've been born with, you know, your body. And the only nutrition advice you need is to eat real food and stay away from sugar as much as you can. If you were to stick to that, you'd do pretty well. So what's exactly that mean? Here it goes. Oh, God, it means that there's plenty of people, quote, working out in gyms across America using every piece of equipment for hours at a time that can't run a mile, can't do a proper push-up or even a body squat or, or hold on to the pull-up bar. Not to mention, do an actual pull-up. Likewise, likewise, there are millions of pe people that pay nutritionists and personal trainers to give them nutrition advice that they already know. Sugar is bad. Wheat is bad. Pasta is bad. Soda is bad. Candy is bad. Ice cream bad. Beer bad. Veggies good. That's good. Fruit good. Lean meats, Fantastic. Ah, and when I tell people like this, they always want to say, but can I have ice cream once in a while? All things in moderation, right? And to that I say, if it works for you, roll with it. But the truth is that until you get out from underneath your very real addiction to carbohydrates, then nothing I tell you about food is going to matter. And until you get out of the mindset that I need to do chest and tries on Monday and back and buys on Wednesdays and legs and shoulders on Fridays, no amount of my functional kettlebell CrossFit wads are going to work for you especially if you're spending 45 minutes on an elliptical reading a magazine and convincing yourself you're in a, quote, fat-burning zone. But again, I know the majority of you listening to this are in search of a much better way. I'm not going to call it the right way because I'm not that naive, but it's definitely a better way. Eating a plant, 
based whole foods diet is simply a better way. Incorporating full body compound muscular movements and body weight exercises is simply better than spot targeting muscle groups. Drinking water will always be better than drinking, always be better than drinking anything else. And so for all of you that are not happy, that are not content and that demand a different way, have the courage to believe there is a better way. And I'm so glad that all of you had the courage to find us. Have a good day, guys.